Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, in this little video, I'm going to show you how I built this desk. Uh, not this part of it, more this bit, this raised section of it. Uh, it's got a height adjustable shelf. A couple of nice little uh, adjustable platforms there. You can see I've got a laptop on one, got the deluge on another. Uh, this can take a fair, fair amount of weight. Uh, I don't keep my keyboard on it because it takes up too much space. Basically my setup had got a bit too big for the, the stand I had before. And I looked online and I didn't really want to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on one of the, uh, the pre-made systems you can get. Although I'm in what looks like an empty room, it's actually my dining room, stroke spare bedroom, uh, and added a massive wall of equipment. It's just going to look rubbish in here. Uh, and I need something that's going to not look too bad in the room and be functional. So come up with this, it's a bit of a DIY thing. Uh, what did it cost me? Probably around about 110 quid, so it's not too dear. Uh, it's still a lot of money, but it's not, it's not anywhere near the price of stuff like this, or stuff like this. Uh, so yeah, you know, maybe you wanna make it yourself. Uh, you're gonna need the following stuff for it. Right, for this to work, you're gonna need some desktop monitor stands. So, let's see what comes up. So these ones here, these are the ones that I've got. They're not too bad, 30 quid, and that is, let's get rid of that. And that is, let's check that's for a pair. So that's for a set of two. So you're gonna to wanna to get a pair of those. And then if we go to Amazon, you're gonna also need a uh, computer monitor arm. Something like this, but a single one. Now, what can be used for this? This isn't too bad, but I don't like the look of the arm on there. This one's probably better, but it's 45 pound. That's not too bad, 20 quid. So you want a pair of these, one for each end of the, uh, of the, of the adjustable table. So you're gonna utilize this part of it, which is the pole itself. And then also the arm. Uh, but what you do is remove this section of the arm here, the bit I'm moving, my cursor over, and then you can transfer this end piece onto there and it shortens it slightly so you're going to want a pair of these and also a laptop tray uh, laptop tray for monitor arm so something like this now uh, that's not bad actually that one there actually comes with it so 40 pound comes with the post uh, the arm and the tray attached uh, what, what did I just look at? That was about £20. I'm just trying to see if it's cheaper to buy the tray on its own. I can't remember what I bought in the past. It was a while ago now. Uh, that one there doesn't come with a post. No. Okay. Well, something like that anyway. Uh, what I'll do though, I'll have a good look before I finish a video, and if I find something cheaper, I'll put it in the links in the description. But uh, but there, that's not too bad. What desktop fitness does that do? It probably says somewhere. It doesn't say there. No, it doesn't actually. But uh, usually they go up to about 60 mil as a desk thickness, which is thicker than most desks. So yeah, that one doesn't seem doesn't seem too bad. And you could get that next day. Yeah, tomorrow delivery. Cool. Okay, and so there's one other thing you're gonna need, and that's a board of some sort to go between the two adjustable posts. Now, I happen to have a a sheet of a uh, 25 mil MDF laying around in my garage, but I build a lot of stuff, so that's you know it's quite normal for me to find that sort of gear laying around in there. But if you're not privy to having that. You, you could buy some MDF from, if you're in the UK, I guess Wixies. Uh, let's see what they've got here. 
building materials, sheet materials, MDF. So like at 18 mil MDF, what you find with MDF, although it's quite easy to cut and uh, you can buy it in big boards, it does tend to bow a bit in the middle. So the thinner the board in you have, the more it's gonna bow in the middle. I've got 25 mil MDF and my posts on my desk are about 1.5 meters apart and they're not really gonna bow at that distance. You might find that 18 mil MDF does bow uh, when you have it supported that far apart. You could put a little extra support under the MDF, maybe with a little bit of uh, a timber of some sort to stop it bowing. But here for 26 quid, you can get a sheet 1.8 meters long by 600 mil wide, which, which isn't too bad. Uh, you can cut that down its length so you could get in theory, two shelves out of that at 300 mil wide, or I guess you could come up with something creative, maybe an old scaffold board or something. Let's see, eBay is probably good for that. There you go. It's probably not anywhere near me at all. Uh, but uh, small boards you could sand them up quite nicely they'd be a lot thicker than mdf and they probably won't bow at all so you could have a really long span with those uh that's not bad actually 8.95 four foot long look at that 11 quid it's pretty good isn't it uh 3.9 meter long boards there you're not going to get posted but uh if you've got a car to pick them up it's not too bad i'm sure with a little bit of looking around though you could find something nearby to you uh I don't know what else you could use. If you can make something up out of a bit of metal work, maybe you could use that, that as a as like a support on, on the desk as well to put your, your equipment on. But uh, with a little bit of looking around though, there's quite a lot that can be found or you might just have something at home anyway. Now before I go too far with it, if, if you want an idea of the size of this, I know you can see the equipment on it, but uh, this is, what is it? 1.6 meters wide, which is a fair old size, and uh, that's just under 300 mil deep. If you're wondering what that is, I wouldn't worry about that, that's not important. And if you're wondering what this is, that's not that important either really, so I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, right, let's, uh, let's show you how it gets, it gets built. Okay, so to do this, you're gonna need a few, a few tools. You're gonna need a tape measure, a selection of Allen wrenches, uh, there's a few different sizes there. You're going to need a screwdriver, a Phillips or a crosshead screwdriver, and a pair of pliers, or maybe a spanner uh, to, to hold some nuts together. Right, so I'm taking you behind the back of the desk here now, behind the scenes. Uh, so this is one of the, uh, the desk mounts with the visa arm and laptop, laptop tray attached to it. As you can see, it just clamps them under here. It's not a great deal, great deal to it really. It's really easy to fit. Doesn't cause any damage to the table. Uh, they've got like a little rubber, little rubber shield under there that, that stops it getting damaged. So I've got one there. And as you can see, one down that end as well. I've also got a bit of a cable basket here to try and tidy up all the cabling so it's not seen hanging down from the back of the table. Now, this is the laptop tray that I'm using to hold the bit of uh, the bit of boarding that you saw on there. You you don't necessarily need this. You could actually do do away with them because if you look underneath, there's a little black little black visa plate there, and you could, if you wanted to, just screw your boarding onto that, and it'd probably save you. Well, it depends what you pay for the trays, but probably save you thirty pounds. So, might be worthwhile. But if you do want to get these here, uh, all you need is a screwdriver and a pair of pliers to hold the nut underneath and, and they go on quite easily. When you buy them, they don't come together. So when you buy the arm, this is never, never usually mounted onto it. So you will have to assemble that. Now these arms, uh, these are normal monitor arms, but what I've done, this section here, there's usually another one on the end of it as well. But uh, I didn't want it that long because if you imagine it coming out too far, say out to here, it's a lot of a lot of weight on it. 
So I've cut it down slightly. I say cut it down. I've just removed one of the sections. And once that's turned round then, it brings it nice and close to the pole. And there's, you know, you can put quite a bit of weight on there and it's not really gonna cause a problem. And that's exactly the same the other end. Let's move these out of the way. So that's exactly the same this end. When you're putting these on, when you're putting this bit onto the pole, it's really important that you get this, the height of this one here, exactly the same the other end. So if you don't get the same, your, your board's not gonna be level going along there. So that's what you need the tape measure for so that you can get them set at the same height. Ultimately, these aren't really designed for what I'm using them for. So I've got no markings on the poles, you know, for you to gauge the height they're at. So take the time to measure them properly, otherwise your desk's gonna look a little bit, a little bit wonky. So this bit goes on next. It's pretty straightforward. It's really self-explanatory. It literally just drops on there. There's nothing involved with it, to be honest. Uh, I've not got it screwed on, but you can screw it on from the back. I'll show you. Now there's nothing stopping you screwing these up through here, or depending on what plates you get, you, you might have you know, a different hold arrangement. But you can screw them on there, so this doesn't come off. But they won't drop off anyway, because these laptop trays have got these lips on them, and this ball isn't, isn't going anywhere, you know. It's not, it's not gonna fall off. One thing you want to consider is, uh, well, it depends how fussy you are. You might want to put a lip on the front of here. I'm going to do it on this. I've not got round to it yet because I need to get a little bit of uh, oak to match this. And I'm going to put a little lip on the front so nothing can slide off of there. So at the moment, there is a risk if I that if you want to tilt it right the way down, which I see some people do, so you can have your sinks almost vertical. They're just going to drop straight off with a little uh, lip on the front. It should hold them on there quite well without any without any issue. Another thing, uh, especially if you're using MDF, it does tend to sag, you know, drop down in the middle if the span's too much. Now these, uh, these are 1.6 metres apart. I don't think I'd go any wider using 25 with MDF without supporting the middle, because I think it's likely to bow over time. Now, if I put the lip in on the front, it's probably gonna stop it bowing and, and it won't end up doing it. Or I could put, I could brace it underneath if I wanted to go wider. I don't need to go wider though, so it's not, not really an issue for me. It's something you'll probably have to think about if you can't get bald in this bit. If you get 18 mil MDF, it's more likely to sag because it's a little bit weaker. Uh, but yeah, something to, to bear in mind, you know, the, the span you want. If you've got a smaller desk though, it's probably gonna come in, in more anyway, so maybe it's not gonna be a problem. Now the other thing I had on here is the uh, height adjustable monitor stands. These are nice and cheap, uh, 30 quid, they don't cost a lot at all. Uh, they go quite high. I've got them at the lowest setting, but uh, you can go to that sort of height with them, so you can get them up nice enough out of the way. They've got a decent platform on them. It is 230, 230, 230. So uh, it's a good platform, nice foam base on them. Uh, you know, you can probably get better stands, but I don't want to spend too much on them. Uh, and they're only 30 pounds, so it's quite good. Uh, yeah, they're all right, they've got really easy. Clamps again, nice and straightforward. Let's put them on. And then these, I have on here to uh, hold my laptop. Keeps it out of the way of the, the main desk itself. They go on just like that. In a similar way to the arms that I had underneath, they're just a laptop tray on a modified uh, monitor arm, but uh, nice and adjustable. You can tilt them up and down, 
if you really want to. I go and iron them pretty flat, but uh, we get them back on. So that's it, really assembled, ready for ready for stuff to go on. It doesn't take too long, you know. Uh, I think that probably took me about five minutes to put that back together. Uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty quick. Okay, so right now for the plumb part, we start putting things back together, ready for using. Beasts can go back in the middle, try the place. Now, let's sort my cable in there. Where's the... Right, let's get it all plugged back in. Now, if you don't do it already, which I'm sure most of you do, it really pays to put some labels on things so you know what they're controlling, it does make it easier when you've got to take things apart and reassemble them again. Right, that's it, reassembled. Uh, I've only got the, the power these plugged in at the moment, not the MIDI, MIDI cables and the audio cables. Uh, but to be fair, this is the end of the video and I want it to look like quite a tidy setup. And once I've put one in, it's gonna look a bit of a, bit of a mess. Uh, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a easy DIY desk stand uh, it's cheaper than you know arguably better quality but bigger Jasper stands and other pre-made ones but uh, I've personally not come across anything like this that goes on the desk and I really wanted mine on a desk I've not got a big keyboard setup so you know I don't need massive massive tiers of, of shelves to, to put stuff on for quite a small setup this works really nicely for me so, you know, if, if you think this is any good, click the like button, uh, leave a comment, and, and maybe even subscribe if you like it that much. Thanks a lot.